In this chapter, you'll learn a bit more about data wrangling using the dplyr package from the tidyverse. The packages we'll be using are tidyverse, luberdate, which is a funny name, but really helps you to process dates, and our data skills package. Let's run all of those. The data set that we'll be using for most of our examples today is the discussed data set from the data skills package. So let's load that up with the data function. And have a quick look at it. It's 20,000 observations, so quite a lot of data, of people filling out the three domain discussed questionnaire. So they have a unique ID and then a user ID, so each user might have completed the questionnaire more than once, the date they completed it, and then their responses to seven questions in the moral domain, seven in the sexual domain, and seven in the pathogen domain, asking about various things um, that might elicit disgust. So most of the data wrangling that you'll want to do with psychological data will involve either the tidy R functions that you learned about in the last chapter, or the six main dplyr verbs, select, filter, arrange, mutate, summarize, and group by. Let's start with select. Select does just that. It lets you select columns from a data set. So the first argument to any of these um, dplyr verbs is the data set that you want to work with, so the discussed data set here. And after that, you just write in the names of the columns you want to keep. So let's keep the user ID column and the date column. And look at this. So we have just the user ID and date column from the discussed table. We don't need to select them in order. So they were in that order in the original table, but if we select them on this order, let's say we want to select a range of columns, so all of the moral discussed questions. You can use the shortcut, the colon, to mean all the columns between moral 1 and moral 7. So we can select just those columns. You can also unselect columns. So we can take the discuss table and get rid of the ID and the date columns. And just see now user ID and all of the um, questionnaire columns. If you want to exclude a range of columns, like just the sexual questions, we can use this um, colon shortcut, but you can't just put a minus in front of it. If you do that, you'll get a warning. Numerical expression has 23 elements, only the first used. Um, it's not a very helpful warning. What it means is that you need to put parentheses around this range to be able to exclude all of them. And here we have user ID, date, the moral questions, and the pathogen questions. We've excluded ID and the seven sexual questions. The next function we'll talk about is filter. It does the same as select in that it lets you keep some parts of the data table, but for rows. So it lets you filter in rows that you want. So again, the first argument is the data table that you want to process, so our discuss table. And then after that, our expressions that describe which rows you want to keep. So let's keep rows where user ID is equivalent to 1. Okay. And here we just have the one row where user ID equals 1. Now remember to use this double equal sign for is equivalent to that checks each row whether or not the value in the user ID column is 1. If you just set it like this, that means you're trying to set the column user ID equal to 1. That doesn't make any sense and you'll get an error that looks like this. Um, this one's a pretty helpful error because it suggests this is a common error. You might want to use the double equal sign. You can also use other kinds of expressions like user IDs that are less than 100. And you can chain together expressions. So user ID less than 100, comma, which is like and, moral one equals five. So we just keep that row. 
Instead of the comma, you could also use an and symbol. You can also use a symbol for or. So let's keep all of the rows where user ID equals one or user ID is greater than 200. All right, that's an awful lot of rows. But we can combine then criteria with the and or the or symbol in order to select exactly the rows that we want. The next function that we're going to talk about is arrange. You won't actually use arrange very much when you're processing data in R because you don't have to sort your data into any particular order in order to be able to do things like average together all the values for a group. But sometimes you want to sort your data for display, say, in a table. Okay, so we can arrange our discussed data by the answers to moral one. So we can see it starts with all the people who had zeros. Or arrange them by date. We could arrange them also by um, date in reverse order. This uses the descending function or DESC. You just surround the column name that you want to go in descending order with DESC and you'll get then descending by date. You can also arrange by more than one column so we could arrange by date and then by user ID descending. So here we have all of these collected on the 12th and the user IDs go in reverse order within that group. The next function we'll cover is mutate. This is probably one of the most useful functions in dplyr. Um, it refers to other columns by their name and lets you create new columns based on the values in other columns. So we can take our discussed data set and send it to the mutate function. So remember, if we use this pipe, it takes the output of the previous function or the data frame, if that's just the data frame there, and sends it to the next function as the first argument. I'll often start my data wrangling with the data table that I want to process and then pipe it into things because then if I change my mind about how to process it and need to insert steps here, I don't need to delete the name of the table from the first function when I'm rearranging pipes. Okay, so mutate takes um, this data table and creates a new column. We can create a plain new column. So let's just call this x and make it equal to a constant, um, just the number one. So everybody gets a number one for this new variable called x. All right, and just like I said, I want to insert something. Let's get rid of a lot of these variables um, and just select user ID and moral one through moral seven. Now we can see this a little bit easier. It's still not all on the same page, so maybe just moral one through moral four. There, okay, now we can see the X. All right, we can add more than one new column, and we can also use the values of other columns. So moral total, let's make a new column called moral total, get rid of that X column, and it's going to be equal to moral one plus moral two plus moral three plus moral four. Um, and here we are. I'll show you a much more efficient way to do this later. We can also use previously made columns in new columns. So total plus, call it, let's make a new column called total plus, and that will be moral total plus one. Okay, so this mutate function, create a new column called moral total from the sum of these four columns. And then in the next line, 
it creates a new column called total plus, that is the value of moral total plus one. So the next function is summarize. You can spell it the British way with an S or the American way with a Z, doesn't matter. We'll be spelling it the British way in this class. So summarize, create summary statistics for the data set. Now we put our data set as the first argument or pipe it in. And then the um, arguments after are the names of new columns that we want to create and then some sort of summary function. So here let's create a new column called n and it's going to be equal to the n function. The n function just counts rows. So here our entire data set has 20,000 rows. We can also calculate the average for moral one, say, with the mean function, with the mean of the moral one question. Now, that didn't give us anything. Why might that be? If we look at the discussed data set, moral one, some of the values are NA. Some people didn't actually answer this question. So we need to tell the mean function na.rm equals true. That is, um, we want to remove NAs before we calculate the mean. And here we have the average of moral one. You can put another comma and let's calculate the standard deviation for moral one. So that will be pretty much the same, but using the SD function instead of the mean function. We can also calculate minimum or maximum of these values. Um, and there's a, a wide variety of summary functions that you can use to summarize your data set. Now, this doesn't seem very exciting. What you might want to do is divide your data set into different groups and then summarize it. Um, the next function is group by, and that helps you do this. Okay, so let's um, take our discussed data set. And we're going to create a new column using mutate for what year was the data collected in. We're going to use a function from Luberdate called year date. There we go. So this just adds a column to our data set right to the end of year. Just what year was this. Now we're going to group our data by year now and calculate some summary variables for each year. We can pipe that to the group by function and just type in here group by year. You can group by more than one thing, but here we just want to group them all by year. When you do that, it doesn't look any different than the ungrouped data set. It still has the year column, um, but the functions that you use after grouping are now done within each group. So before, when we use summarize, this calculated these summary variables, mean, standard deviation, or the n, for the entire data set. Now, if we do this exact same thing, but first, having grouped by year, it will calculate each of these for the individual year. Okay, so we have for each year, how many rows were in that year, what's the mean of moral one, and the standard deviation of moral one. We also see that there's um, a warning. It says summarize ungrouping output override with dot groups argument. This is just telling you that um, you had grouped by year, and now you ran a summarize function. And it's going to ungroup your output after that. You might want to have kept your groups. If you did want to keep the groups, then you would set at the end groups equals keep. If you want to get rid of this warning, and I usually do, um, set groups equals drop. That's the, kind of the default 
um, value, but then if you tell it explicitly that you want to drop groups, it will stop giving you this warning that that's what it's doing implicitly. In the next section, we'll tie all these functions together with pipes.